الله لمحمد من سكين صلوات الله محمد وآل محمد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي لا يبلغ مدحته القائلون ولا يؤدي حقه المجتهدون ولا يحصي نعماءه العادون ولا يدركه بعد الهمم ولا يناله غوص الفتن الذي بعد فلا يرى وقرب فشهد النجوى تبارك وتعالى وصلى الله على أشرف بريته وسيد رسله وخاتم أنبيائه ومبلغ رسالته وبشير نعمته ونذير نقمته وعبده المؤيد ورسوله المسدد المصطفى الأمجد أبي القاسم محمد <تصفيق> وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين الغر الميامين الذين أذهب الله أنهم الرجس وتهرهم تطهيرا ولعنة الله الأبدية الدائمة على أعدائهم أعداء الله من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الحكيم واصدق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واتقوا فتنة التي لا تصيبنا منكم زلم خاصة والله شديد اللقاء صدق الله العلي العظيم صلى الله محمد وآل محمد السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله صلى الله عليك يا مولاي يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفناء عليكم مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار 
ولا جاله الله آخر اللحظة منا لزيارتك صلى الله عليك يا الإمام الغريب والخد التريب والشيب الخديب صلى الله عليك يا مولاي يا أبا الأحرار السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى All together. As-salamu ala ala Ali ibn al-Husayn wa ala awlad al-Husayn وعلى أصحاب الحسين الذين بذلوا مهجهم دون الحسين ورحمة الله وبركاته صلوات الله محمد وآل محمد Respected lovers of Ahlul Bayt, Salamullahi alayhi majma'een, and followers of the school of Karbala. Last night in our first discussion, we addressed four very common questions in the minds of people regarding this program, concerning this commemoration. Why we commemorate Karbala? Ashura. Why we commemorate in this particular style with such a great emphasis and emotional element in that commemoration? And the third question that why this commemoration promotes love of Ahlul Bayt, but at the same time expresses its animosity and hatred toward enemies of Ahlul Bayt. Why? In other words, this commemoration, Majalis, Aza, 
has two major contents. One is love and other one is hate. Why? And we answered and responded in detail. And the fourth question, that why all the emotions are emotions of mourning and grief and sorrow. Why not you celebrate victory of Imam Hussain? Why you cry? What is the philosophy of tears and shedding of tears for Hussain ibn Ali and Karbala? We replied all these questions and responded in the light of Quran and Hadith and of course common human sense and rationality. <clears throat> Tonight, inshallah, we would like to ask next question. What is relevance of Karbala with our world of today, with our life of today? Is it something confined in history 14 centuries ago and does not relate to us, we are living in this world today. Or no, there is a deep connection between these two. What is the relevance between Karbala, Imam Hussain, Ashura and today's world? And brothers and sisters, basically that is the central theme of our discussion for coming nights, inshallah. In nutshell, we want to say very confidently that Karbala and Imam Hussain alayhi salatu was salam is the most relevant message for our times. We can find model and model in Karbala which addresses Challenges which we face today in our world. This sentence written on this banner and on number of banners is a sentence from prophetic hadith where Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam says, Inna al Hussain, okay, this is part of the hadith, not the full hadith. Inna al Hussain, misbahu al huda, wa safinatun nija. That Hussain is lamp of guidance and ship of salvation. What does it mean? How Hussain is lamp of, chandelier of guidance and ship of salvation. Not only for people 14 centuries ago, 
but even people today. In Ziyarat of Arbain of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, which is narrated from Imams, of course, we got a very amazing sentence, very beautiful sentence, very thoughtful sentence. We say, Salam on you, Alladhi badala mahjatahu layun qidal ibad min al halaka. Salam on you, someone who gave his blood to rescue humanity from destruction. Hussain, you are the one who gave blood to rescue layastan qadal ibad servants of Allah, humanity minal halaka to save them from destruction. If you remember in last night of discussion and our response to all these questions, why, 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 four whys, we replied. We replied according to our mental uh, level and intellectual capacity. But if you remember one thing I repeatedly said that this is not all. Certain sentences in a hadith which are recorded in Sunni and Shia both resources indicate to us that Karbala got certain secrets which we do not understand which are beyond our comprehension. Oh. When Umm Salma said, Ya Rasulullah, why you don't make dua that Allah must protect him and he must not be killed on the plains of Iraq? What was the reply of the Prophet? He said, no, I was informed that Hussain will achieve a degree, a status above everyone. Daraja, level, a status above everyone. Are these recorded by a number of Sunni scholars, including, as I said, Ibn Kasir last night, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Tabarani and others. And that status Hussain cannot achieve without this route to go. This route of shahadat and martyrdom. Now this shows, you know, there are certain things we do not understand. That is somewhere else. But some level of understanding is there. And inshallah, in coming nights, we will try to explore those aspects. We wrote here, O oh Hussain, we need, we seek your inspiration in this world of trouble and challenges and problems. Yes. And that is the theme, and that is the really call of this Muharram, inshallah, or slogan of this Muharram this year. That world today is seriously facing challenges, Allahu Akbar, on different levels. On Muslim Ummah level, of course, Allahu Akbar. I don't need to tell you, I don't need to say, you know, you hear. What's happening in Palestine is one example. I don't need to tell you, you know that. 
what's happening in Bahrain, what is happening in Nigeria in our own continent, what is happening in Sudan, what is happening in Burma, in, you know, situation of Rohingya, which we have, forget them now, don't talk about them, for a while we spoke about them, but they are suffering, Allah Akbar. What is happening to our brothers in Kashmir? He, what we know is, you know, very little. What is happening in uh, different parts of the world with Muslims? In India alone, more than almost two million people are on verge of losing their citizenship. They will become statusless people. There's a new pass, law passed there where every single Indian has to prove that he is Indian. And now, without going in those details, you know, that is the calculation or more or less analysis that over two million people will lose their status. They will become citizen of nowhere, homeless. Huh? This is the situation. And of course, you look at that. Uh, this is the ground and the grassroot level situation. And then look at the high hierarchy. And you look at the leadership of this Ummah, Allahu Akbar. Corruption, fasad. You know, there's no concept of service, there's no concept of Islam, an Ummah of Islam. And there's no concept of resistance against the worst enemies of Islam. Today, what we have a phenomena in Arabic, it is called tatbi means normalization of the relationship with Zionist regime. Huh? Days, there were days when it was a taboo, it was, you know, big, big thing to talk to Israeli or talk to have any type of relationship with Zionist system or Zionist entity or anybody who's representing that entity. To talk to them, it was a, you know, very big, oh, how can you can speak, you know. In United Nations gathering, if somebody even accidentally greeted one of the Israeli officials and somebody took the picture, it used to become big issue, it used to go viral and I don't know, all that. People have to answer and everything. Today, you know, very proudly, uh, very proudly, some of these so-called Arabs, huh, they stand with the Israeli flag. Openly, not in anywhere else, but in the land of Haramain, in the most sacred land of Islam, in the most sacred land of our deen and iman and history. Allahu Akbar. Very normal articles are written in the newspapers talking about what is the need to fight with Zionist or Israelis. Oh, they are also okay. They got right to exist and all. That's no big deal. Openly people consider each other more enemies than real enemy. Hmm? Look at that, their animosity toward Islamic Republic of Iran. Allahu Akbar. We're not here to now represent to speak on behalf of Islamic Republic, but even from a very neutral point of view, you look at that. How this country and how this nation and these people are targeted by the worst enemies of Islam, with absolutely no mercy. People in Islamic Republic of Iran, today there are people who are dying because they do not have access to medication. Huh? 
this is this is the situation and not only those open enemies are doing this to this nation and this people no the people who encourage them the people who support them the people who provoke them the people who want them to do that more than even themselves are muslim leaders what is this huh? you're talking about islamic republic look at that when with they differ with, with each other huh? how they hate each other <laughs> look at the situation of qatar versus others <laughs> they are ready to level the whole country to the ground doesn't matter to them yesterday they were the best of the friends partners in the crimes in syria for example no doubt about that supplying all the logistical and financial support to the terrorists there today they are enemy in yemen what they did not do allahu akbar even today even today they attacked a detention center over 100 people were killed in one building and again they are interesting that as soon their interest conflicts with each other clashes with each other you will see that ua now playing one song and saudis others and their you know proxy malaysia are killing each other mercilessly this is the world this is the umma in which we are living political leadership like that religious leadership allahu akbar allahu akbar the religious leadership whose job is only and only to justify corruption fasad operation exploitation injustice of their political leaders this is their major role and job they must bring quran and hadith to prove that whatever this prince or that king or that amir or that this is doing is correct is according to quran and sunna in land of haramain ha huh? <coughs> where allahu akbar these so called mullahs used to shout on you for small things for small issues ha huh? today they are happy to accept music concerts happening they are happy to accept night clubs opening they happy to accept casinos opening they happy to accept anything no problem and then they justify they say it's fine it's okay list is too long brothers and sisters this is you know what i'm trying to say the turbulence the challenges in ummah of islam are multiple from masses who are lost to religious leadership who got nothing else but to serve their masters to political leaders Allahu Akbar you can't say nothing to occupation to injustice suffering there's no end to it and if you look at the broader world beyond the limits and borders of ummah of islam unfortunately situation is like that again i don't want to go my time does not allow now to just give you the background but you can see and i don't need to tell you really what is happening this issue of uh, fires in brazil for example this issue of different scenarios in whole african continent and the wars and the civil wars and the fights and the corruption and sufferings of humanity and people allahu akbar it is there this this is the dilemma this is the world in which we living i want to raise this question brothers and sisters 
for this turbulent world with this world full of injustice oppression suffering do karbala and imam hussain got a message something to inspire them something to stand and resist or no this is the question salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad this discussion has of course different angles different levels different aspects to talk and speak i will inshallah try to start at least from one very important very basic issue you see if you want to understand message of imam hussein message of karbala then you have to understand ideology of hussein approach of imam hussein otherwise no benefit huh? you have to go bit deep and understand how imam hussein sayyid shuhada alayhi salatu wassalam looked at different phenomena at different situations and challenges in human life and society we need to go back and ask this very basic question that in a school of karbala and in a school of imam hussein alayhi salatu wassalam what is definition of an insan we have to ask this question that in light of imam's approach karbala's approach you know how imam look at the responsibility on the shoulders of human being this is this is the question we would like to address inshallah and start discussing tonight inshallah as time allows one very very important point i would like to explain to you brothers and sisters one very first lesson one very first point which we learn from imam hussain in his movement in his uprising in his stand in his revolution of karbala is social responsibility please understand امام حسین سلام اللہ علیہ سید الشہدا وائے وائے ہی ٹک دس اسٹینڈ اینڈ لیفٹ مدینہ کیم ٹو مکہ اینڈ فائنلی موو ٹوڈ کھوفا اینڈ اینڈ اپ ان کھربلا اینڈ واز کھیلڈ most important document of course is that wasiya or the will which he wrote to his brother muhammad ibn hanafiya and in that will what he wrote in neelam akhruj ashran wala batran wala zaliman wala mufsidan bal inna ma kharajtu li talab al islah fi ummat jaddi i did not come out to create fasad seeking popularity power control 
destabilization of society, creating fitna and mischief. No, no, no. I came with one purpose out. Le islah ummat jaddi to reform umma of my grandfather. Umma, salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. This is really very important. And to understand this headline of Imam Hussain, this is Imam Hussain gave this headline. Where Imam Hussain started? In Medina, right? In Medina, he wrote this wasiyat to his brother, with will and advice to his brother, stepbrother Muhammad ibn Hanafiya. And in this wasiyah, he wrote that, documented it, stamped it, and gave it to Muhammad ibn Hanafi. He believed quite significance for this. So, Islah, reform of the Ummah, is the headline of Imam's mission, the start of the mission. But you will not be able to understand what Islam means, what he is talking about, until you don't go to roots of Hussain. Husseini schools or roots are Quranic roots. So I have to take you to Quran and try to explain to you some principal issues and then you will understand what is the meaning of Imam Hussain saying, in Nama Kharashto, I came out seeking reform in Ummah of my grandfather, brothers and sisters. Quran, Islam, ah, listen now carefully. Of course, we will not be able to complete this discussion, but let me start this discussion. Islam came up with the idea which we are facing today. Now let me take you just again back to what we were just now talking about today's world, turbulent world, which we are using the terminology turbulent world, the world full of problems. Now if you look at this world full of problems, full of troubles, one of the basic reasons there, listen please, in this setup which is a purely you know, used to be East and West, used to be uh, communism or socialism and uh, capitalism and clash of two ideologies, East and no more now. Now basically, one ideology, one approach, one culture is ruling over this world. And without any doubt, source of trouble also is at this moment in time that particular approach, which we call it, if we want to call it in a little bit with the freedom of words, liberal capitalism, Western liberal capitalism. This is the mess which is created, the situation which we are setting, any, any point you put finger, you will realize behind is this approach is this ideology. In this ideology, very start, I want to take you to the basic foundation. This ideology starts from one very important principle. And what is that? That principle is that individual is important. Individual is important. I am important. I must worry about myself. I must seek my interest. I must worry. I must be, you know, concerned about my benefit. What happens to others is not my headache. It's not my problem. Believe me, this is the foundation of this approach. Today doesn't look like that, huh? They are 
very good experts of beautifying and putting things in a such a charming and attracting uh, you know form it fool all of us but let's go to the bottom bottom line is personal interest personal benefit individualism individualism now i must look after my interest you know even in this western liberalism capitalism even if people talk about others you know what is their approach please please maybe tonight's discussion a little bit dry but you have to understand really this is the challenge we are facing don't think it's a philosophy it's something which has influenced our own thinking and life even our religious approach also became like that i will explain to you now now you know what they say that even if you want to do something for society or for other people other than you you know why you should do because finally it will benefit you mm. selfish approach even if they say that you must do something for example of course they have political parties they have i don't know all these social service so why they do it what is the motivation no we live in a society and in this society we cannot live without that we have to provide that because if you provide that it will end up in your benefit also so final outcome your benefit final outcome your interest your profit you are the criteria not others this selfish self centered individualism is one of the major challenges of today's world on different levels everybody fighting his own war therefore i have no mercy for you if you die so what huh? i will make money i am ready to sell this medication for example for extraordinary exorbitant price but people are dying so what i am making money that is that is the criteria this policy of yours political policy for example financial policy economical policy is resulting in suffering of people so what does not matter i am benefiting it is resulting in the destruction of environment and climate so what so what it is for me beneficial doesn't matter doesn't matter all and even those let me tell you something even those who are talking about climate ha huh, then somehow they bring it back to self interest individual and that's all western liberal thinking never freed itself from the prison of i and my and self interest that is the criteria salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad bar quran quran allahu akbar approach is different is different very different unique approach quran believes without any doubt that individual is important hmm? individual is important but there is something called society community and that community and society is also crucial and important you see this individualistic thinking infiltrates as i said to you even in our religious approaches are you with me or not let me just explain to you before i go for quran you know we say if i am uh, religiously okay if i make namaz if i make dua if i pay zakat if i fast if i stay away from haram alhamdulillah finish 
I am doing my duty. Got nothing to do with others. There is no other. Uh, there are certain organizations or jamaats, I don't want to know mention name. They push this idea very strongly. Individualistic religious, religiousness, religiosity, spirituality. You yourself must be pure. You yourself must be clean. You yourself must be pious. Masalam, finish. Nothing else. What happens around you? What happens in society? No, no. But amazing. Listen please carefully. Quran approach is different. I would like quickly to read for you two, three verses from Holy Quran. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Where it is very clear that Islam acknowledges society as independent entity. Please. Huh? We are community. First of all, this, you know, concept of Ummah, concept of Ummah, which is so many times repeated. Quran believes, please listen carefully, Quran believes or Quran presents this philosophy that like you as individual have a life, have a lifespan, you live and you die. Islam believes communities also have a lifespan. Huh? Quran says, وَلِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ أَجَلٌ فَزَعَجَا أَجَلُهُمْ لَا يَسْتَخِرُونَ سَعَةً وَلَا يَسْتَخْدِمُونَ Amazing. Surah Mubarak ye Araf. As there is a time, ajal, like we all of us got a ajal, we all of us got a lifetime, a time span, right? Quran says, Ummat also got a ajal. Wa iza ja ajalahum, when time of that community on ummah comes, means time of the dying of that ummah comes. La yastakhiruna sa'atan wala yastakhdimun. They will, not be bring, they will not be able to bring it forward or, you know, delay it even for an hour. No, not possible. Not possible. I don't want to go in details. There are number of verses of Quran. In fact, Quran believes, you see, please understand this approach of Quran that in Quran believes, Islam believes, that there are two entities. There's an individual entity like we are and our communal entity, entity or our entity as a society, our wujud and existence as a community. We have two. Two identities. Individual identity and communal identity. You know, <clears throat> can I give an example? Shahid Mutahri, in fact, in one of his books, he gives this example very beautifully. He said, look, if you want to analyze human society, you know, you can exemplify human society like one body, right? With different organs, hands, foot, head, all, all different organs. Like, Saadi says, Bani Adam azai yak digarand. Saadi, the great Persian poet, he says that Bani Adam or children of Adam are parts of organs of one body. Azai, Yegdi Garand. Organs of one body. That's one example. Or the other example is, listen please carefully, is this. That uh, children of Adam or human society, he gives beautifully, Ayatollah Mutahari gives this example. He says, it's like a garden which has a lot of trees. So now this garden has a lot of trees. But 
these trees got nothing to do with each other. Every tree is on, on its own. You know, the role and the function of tree, what is there? What is garden? Just collection of the trees. But tree itself, one tree does not have any influence on other tree. Other tree does not have anything to do with other tree. Now this tree on its own is a tree, grows, becomes big, gives fruit, whatever, whatever, everything happens, right? Finish. But this tree got nothing to this other tree. But the other example which Shadi says or gives, this great poet, what he says? He says, no, Bani Adam, Aza ayek digaran, that children of Adam are like parts of one body. Now, parts of one body are very much dependent on each other, very much connected to each other. Hand cannot function without brain. Brain cannot act upon without hand or similarly other organs. So all these organs are connected. Now the question is, when Quran looks at human society, at human ishtima, how Quran looks upon that? Like a human body or like a garden? Like a jungle or a forest with millions of trees together? They are together but they got nothing to do with each other. They have no role as jungle. They have as one individual tree only role. Shahid Mutahari says, with not one, but hundreds of verses of Quran, we understand it very clearly. Quran says, no, no. We are, we are not completely like a body, like Saadi says, that this organ like hand, without brain, without heart, without lungs, completely disabled, can't do nothing. No, not like that. No. Individuals also can play and have a role individually. But at the same time, it's not like trees and jungle where they are disconnected to each other. No. And therefore, he says, there are two identities. There are two identity. Identity as an individual and identity as a society and ummah. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allah, Allah, Muhammad. Allah. Allah. I got only a few minutes left. Huh? Yes, brothers and sisters. This is approach of Quran. Therefore, I read this verse for you. Like for an individual, there's a life is spent, 100 years, 80 years, 70 years you will live. Quran says societies and human beings, human societies, ummah also got life span. For example, in this other verse, uh, you know, ladina yadu'una min dunillah adman ilmin. Okay, without going in those details, then it says, kazalika zayyanna lekulle ummatin amalahum. Means Quran says, that like every individual of you got some qualities now. You like something, you don't like something. Some people are courageous, some people are scared, some people are generous, some people are stingy. Similarly, Quran says, Likulle ummatin zayyanna. We have decorated certain qualities for nation. Means you have a quality as nation, sorry, as an individual, and you have certain qualities as nation. No. So very important. But remember one thing, huh? it does not mean that our hands are tied and we are compelled in society where we live. That will become jabber of tarikh. That will become compulsion of the history. It means we have no say over our destiny. No, no, no. That is again another extreme which uh, theory of dialectic speaks about it and socialism and communism goes that far, we don't go that far. Quran is neither to that extreme nor to this extreme, not to the capitalism where everything is individual, nothing by the name of society and not like socialist communist approach where, you know, individual does not exist and jabber of tarikh or compulsion of history rules over our destinies and we have nothing to offer. Listen please carefully. Quran, because I need to conclude, I need to take at least our discussion to a point where I can, inshallah, continue tomorrow. Another very important point in Quran is this, that in the day of Qayyamat, you are responsible for two accounts. Please listen carefully. Now you will understand Imam Hussain. Huh? 
in day of qiyamah you will be asked not one question you will be asked two questions first question let me read it for you what it says bismillah ar rahman ar rahim wa kullu insanin alzamna ho ta'irahu fi unqi wa nukhriju lahu yawm al qiyamah kitaban yalqahu manshura and every insan and every human being we have compelled him that his account is hanging in his neck in the day of qiyamah we will bring him out and he will meet his book of deeds yalqahu kitaban manshura there it is his book will be given to him yalla bismillah that is your report <coughs> activity report there what you did in your 70 years 80 years of life bismillah take it ha huh? that is one account you will be of me i will be receiving but according to quran shahid sadr says rahmatullah alay shahid muhammad bakr sadr in sunan tarikh fil quran very beautifully he says allah mata bata bai in this under the tafsir of this verse similarly and then shahid mutari narrates from him all of them they say but in the day of qiyamah in the day of akhirat two accounts are there one is individual account and the other one is national account my brother two questions how let me read it for you surah mubarak ay jasiya wa thara kullu ummatin jasiya kullu ummatin tud'a ila kitabiha al yawm tujzawna ma kuntum ta'malun you will see every nation fallen on its knees every nation will be summoned to its books today you will be requited for what you used to do so now one is individual account and other one is your national account allahu akbar so i will not be responsible about myself alone i will be responsible for whole community also in which i lived are you with me or not in other words which i recited in the start of my khutaf wattaqu fitnatan la tusibanna alladhina zalamu minkum khassatan wa'lamu anna allaha shadidul iqab and be aware of a punishment which shall not visit the wrong doers among you exclusively no 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 that punishment will come to everybody even those who did not oppress but they will also will suffer you are saying how you say yes but i did not do you did not do so what but you lived in a society you lived in a community which was a unjust community which was a unfair community which was a oppressive community you did not do anything to change you are responsible for others actions also salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad ah allah allah salli ala muhammad na imam husain salamullah alayh sayyidu shuhada aba abdullah was shouting and crying for this pain not for individual inshallah tomorrow night we will little bit explore it more assalamu alaik ya aba abdullah imam husain was not worried that people are not making namaz in their house no people were making namaz not that people were not making quran hafiz no they were making quran hafiz also ha huh? people were not going to hajj oh people were going in millions to hajj so hajj was happening namaz was happening fasting was happening zakat was going on all everything was happening but what was wrong that husain was shouting in nama kharaj to le talab al islah fi ummat jaddi i came out to reform this umma my brother if umma could have understood that shouting and calling of hussain that this umma requires reform today we were not sitting with this mess 
with this situation which we are sitting today. Somebody said, if two incidents in history were not forgetting, Ghadir and Karwala, Ummah was somewhere else. Assalamu alaikum ya Aba Abdullah. What a tragedy. What a tragedy. Ignoring Ghadir, forgetting Karbala. Allahu Akbar. Sidelining Ghadir, underestimating Karbala. Second of Muharram is tomorrow, brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum. Ya Aba Abdullah. According to historians, it is on the 2nd of Muharram, 61 year after Hijra, Imam Hussain's caravan arrived on the plains of Karbala. And when Imam Hussain's caravan arrived on the plains of Karbala, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Imam's horse refused to continue. History says Imam changed change couple of horses, one after other. <laughs> but didn't want to move. Then Imam asked to go and look for somebody in the villages around. There was a village of a tribe, Bani Asad, nearby. People went to fetch somebody from there. Imam asked, what is the name of this land? They replied, Ghazariya. Imam asked, is there any other name for this land? They said, Nainawa. Imam asked, is it any other name? They say, Shatul Farad. Imam said, is it any other name? Allah Akbar. The person who was brought from this area said, Karbala, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Imam Hussain immediately came down from the horse and said, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun. We reached, we reached to our final destination. Imam Hussain picked a small amount of dust and sand from that land. And then he brought from his, you know, pocket or luggage or something, another small amount of sand. He smelled this sand and he smelled that sand and said, these both sands have similar smell, similar fragrances. Zainab Salamullah alayhi asked, Brother, what are you doing? What you are comparing between this sand and the sand which you had? He said, this is the sand which my grandfather gave it to me. Allahu Akbar. Saying, oh my son, you will be killed on the sand like this one. Allahu Akbar. You will be killed on the sand like this one. I am just feeling the smell and fragrance of both sand is exactly the same. Allahu Akbar This is the place We will bring All our luggage down All our stuff down This is the place Where we will camp This is the place Where we will be Surrounded by enemies This is the place Where enemies will attack on us This is the place where our bodies will be chopped and our youth will be killed and our children will be massacred. Assalamu alaikum ya Aba Abdullah. Amira salamu appar. Ay Sayyidu Shuhada. Ay Mawla Aba Abdullah al-Hussain. Wo waqt aya. 
वो वक्त आया कि जब मौला की सवारी करबला के मैदान के करीब पहुंची अल्लाह अकबर और एक मर्तबा इमाम जो घोड़े पर सवार थे एक जरा सी गुनूदगी आई और उस गुनूदगी के आलम में इमाम ने इन्ना ला व इन्ना राज कहना शुरू किया इमाम के करीब इमाम का अजीज तरीन जवान अली अकबर मौजूद था आया करीब इमाम के कहने लगा बदा पिदारे बुजुर्ग वार ये आप आए इस चर्जा क्यों पढ़ रहे हैं ये आप आए इन्ना लाह की तिलावत क्यों कर रहे हैं मौला ने जवाब दिया अली अकबर मैंने अभी ख्वाब में देखा ये कारवान हरकत कर रहा है लेकिन इसे मौत हरकत दे रही है अली अकबर ने पलट के कहा या बता ये बताइए अलसना अल हक हम हक के रास्ते पर हैं या नहीं इमाम ने जवाब दिया इसमें क्या शक है कि हम हक के रास्ते पर हैं बस एक मरतबा अली अकबर का ये अजीम जवाब जो तारीख में महफूज हो गया जिसे सुनहरे नफ्सों से लिखा जाए कहा बाबा अगर हम हक पर हैं तो फिर क्या डर हम मौत के पीछे जाएं या मौत हमारे पीछे आए अल्लाह अकबर अल्लाह अकबर इमाम करबला पहुंचे खेमे लगाए गए जैनब कुबरा बेकरार है क्या वो दश्त आ गया क्या वो सहरा आ गया ऐ भैया जहां हमारे बच्चों को जबा किया जाएगा जहां हमारे जवानों के सरों को बदन से जुदा किया जाएगा जहां हमारे बच्चियों के मुंह पर तमाचे मारे जाएंगे जहां हमारे खेमों को आग लगाई जाएगी जहां हमारे असबाब को लूटा जाएगा जहां हमारे शहीदों के जिस्मों पर घोड़े दौड़ाए जाएंगे अलामीन सयालमीन अलमिनबिनकलबूम
حسین 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 دو بی برنات دو بی برنات این کربلا اون آشورا Our heart is with you, our heart is with you, our heart is with you. Hossein, 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 Hossein. Hossein, Hossein, we wish to see your Karbala. We wish to be in Karbala next Ashura, Inshallah, Inshallah. Hossein, 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 Man Aashigam, Man Aashigam, عاشق رویت یا حسین عاشق کویت یا حسین عاشق بویت یا حسین 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 Hussein, <laughs> On that sad and grievous day of Ashura, we are proud to be called the Shia. When our eyes and our heart will shed a tear for our Mawla Hussein John, Hussein John. Ya Hussein, you went to speak to enemy, told them all the evil ways and treachery, but their children, their hearts has become so tight that the grandson of Rasul they would find. Ya Hussein, 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 Ya Hussein. Ya Hussein, you saw your friends and family go through suffering and pain and misery. Such torment and trials only you could endure. Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein. Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, Ya 
Abu Sayyidu Tukyo San Ali Azgar To the enemy to get them some water But they had no decency or sympathy Ya Allah, they had no humanity Ya Abu Sayyidu 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 Today we think of Sakina How she longed to be back home in Medina But she thought of you with tears in her eyes For she knew you were on your way to Shada Ya Hussain 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 Jawan Ya Hussain Jawan Ashayidi Karbala Ya Hussain Jawan Ya Hussain Jawan Ya Hussain Jawan Ashayidi Karbala Ya Hussain Jawan Ya Hussain Jawan Ya Hussain Jawan Ashayidi Karbala Ya Hussain Jawan Ya Hussain Jawan Ya Hussain Jawan Ashayidi Karbala Ya Hussain Jawan Ya Hussain Jawan, Ya Hussain Jawan, Ashayidi Karbala, Ya Hussain Jawan, Ya Hussain Jawan, Ya Hussain Jawan, Ashayidi Karbala, Ya Hussain Jawan, Ya Hussain Jawan, Ya Hussain Jawan, Ashayidi Karbala, Ya Hussain Jawan, Ya Hussain, Ya Hussain. Ya Hussain, 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 All together. Ya Hussain, Ya Hussain, Ya Hussain, Ya Hussain, Ya Hussain. Ya Hussain, Ya Hussain, Ya Hussain, Ya Hussain. اے چاند محرم کے تو بدلی میں چلا جا اے چاند محرم کے تو بدلی میں چلا جا اے چاند محرم کے تو بدلی میں چلا جا اے چاند محرم تو بدلی میں چلا جا ہے چاند محرم کے تو بدلی میں چلا جا ہے چاند محرم کے اے چاند محرم کے تو بدلی میں چلا جا اے چاند محرم کے تو بدلی میں چلا جا تجھے دیکھ کے مر جائے نا تجھے دیکھ کے مر جائے نا بیمار ہے سگرا چاند محرم کے تو بدلی میں 
یا حسین یا حسین یا حسین یا حسین السلام علیک یا ابا عبد الله وعلى الارواح التي حلت بفناء عليك منا سلام الله ابدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله اخر العهد منا لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين الذين بذلوا مهجهم دون الحسين ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا غريب الغرباء يا ثامن الحجاج يا علي بن موسى الرزا كن شفيعنا وشفيا لوالدين يوم الجزاء ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا مولانا يا صاحب النصر والزمان يا إمام الإنس والجان أجل الله تعالى فرجك وسهل الله مخرجك وزهورك ورحمة الله وبركاته الله شاء الله برادرز تمارو تسترز